Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is something a little bit fun and different. I am gonna be sharing with you how I take and edit all of my photos. I asked you guys on my Instagram recently if you wanted to see a video like this where I just kind of share with you guys my process, uh, you know what I use to take my pictures, what I use to edit them, and so many of you guys said yes. So I'm really excited to share all of my tips and secrets with you. I'm definitely gonna like share with you my secret sauce, but hey, you know, I'm all about helping other people out and there is room for everyone in social media. So if you want to see how I take my pictures and what I use to edit them and basically how I make them look the way that they typically look, let's get started. Okay, so first things first, what I use to take pretty much all of my pictures for my Instagram um, as well as all my YouTube thumbnails is my nicer DSLR camera. So this one is old. It is a Canon Rebel. It is the T3i um, model. They have like a much later one out now, but I've had this for years. It works great. I absolutely love it. And I use this to take all of my pictures. So I do have one other camera. I do have the Canon G7X. It's what I am currently filming on now. Um, I don't use that to take pictures, although it's so much more convenient because it has Wi-Fi. I haven't quite, I don't know. I think I needed to maybe just play with it more, but I just, my pictures turn out so much better on this camera, like way better in comparison to the Canon G7X. So that's why I always just still use my DSLR. So this is the camera I use to take all of my pictures. I don't really use my iPhone ever to take photos, although iPhone cameras are awesome. You don't necessarily need a really fancy camera um, to have a beautiful Instagram feed or just to take nice pictures. Um, and I do have like the iPhone 8 now that has the um, portrait mode, which is exciting. I just haven't really played with it yet. So I don't use my iPhone, but you totally can. Okay, so back to the camera that I use. The main reason I like using this is because my pictures just come out so crisp and so beautiful, but the absolute main reason I like using my camera is because I like to use it on a specific setting and it makes my pictures come out so much brighter and also it helps to blur the background. Um, and by the way, I just use the regular lens that came with this camera. I don't do anything fancy. I am like pretty um, basic when it comes to all my equipment. Um, so I did not get like a fancier lens, um, although some of them you can upgrade and they're not super expensive, but this is just the, the lens that came with my camera. But anyway, so I like to shoot on the AV setting and on this setting you can adjust um, the aperture. So you can also adjust the f-stop too. I'm like not the best with cameras. Um, I only know like the basics, but the f-stop I usually shoot on. I usually keep it at, let me pull it up. It's usually at a five. And, um, and then as far as the aperture, I will adjust it based on like the lighting situation I'm in. I usually go anywhere from like a zero all the way up to a two. And that is like my secret. That is what makes my pictures so bright. Of course, I then go and edit them and make them even brighter. But if I shoot just on like the, um, regular setting, the like annual, not annual, manual setting, my pictures just start, do not turn out the same. So I absolutely love using my camera because I shoot on that setting and it makes such a difference. Also, another thing to know is I always, always, always take photos in natural light. So I'm always taking my photos in the daytime, whether it's inside or outside, all about the natural light. Whenever you use, use your flash, it just doesn't turn out very well. It's not a very beautiful picture in comparison to what you can get if you take it in daylight. So I always take my pictures in natural light. And if I'm in like my house, I will gravitate towards the areas um, and try and find the areas that are the brightest in the house like during that time of the day because the more natural light you have, I just think the more beautiful the photos look. If you've seen my feed, you know I like bright, airy photos. So that's just what I um, prefer. Also a little tip and a secret I have that I have talked about on Instagram before, but I have a little remote control. I will link it down below. It's like, I think $8 on Amazon, super cheap. And I use that all the time to take photos because I work for myself, but I work from home and I'm alone. So a lot of the times I have to take my own pictures and I try my best to be really sneaky about the remote and the shots. And most people don't tend to see it or I can completely hide it. Um, but that's just kind of like the reality of what I'm working with, but it totally works. And so if you are, you know, trying to take nice photos in the daytime and you're alone or you're just alone in general, you don't have anyone to take pictures for you, get yourself one of those remotes and thank me later. Um, at least for this camera that I have, there is a remote setting. So you can just put that on there and you'll be able to, you know, take photos remotely with the remote. 
So once my photo is taken, it is time to move on to editing. When I do take pictures, I usually do take a couple and I'll pick the one that turned out the best, I think, or I think that just looks the best. Um, and then I will go ahead and like export it to my phone and I do all of my editing on my phone, guys. I know some people use Photoshop and presets and get real fancy, which there's nothing wrong with that. If you love photography and you enjoy doing that, totally, you know, that's awesome. But I do want to say that you absolutely do not need all of that fancy stuff. I do all of my photo editing on my phone and everything that I use is completely free. I've never paid for it. Well, I don't think I have. Certainly not now. Um, I don't pay for any of the stuff that I use to edit my photos and I think that they turn out pretty good. So you definitely don't need all the fancy stuff. Um, but of course, if that's something you're passionate about, then go for it. So I think the best way to show you guys like in real time how I edit a photo is just to actually show you in real time as I edit a photo so you can see all the steps that I take, all the, the filters and the settings and just the things that I like to use to tweak my photos and make them nice and bright and crisp and airy and just how I like them. Okay, so I've got my picture in the photos. This is the one that I'm gonna be editing for you guys. So the very first thing I do is obviously I have the photo in my photos, but the very first thing I do as far as editing is I go to the Color Story app. This is my favorite app for editing um, as far as filters go. They have such good ones. So I'm just gonna open up the picture and um, okay so down here they have all their filters a lot of these you have to buy um, but they have two that are free the essentials collection and then you can see they've got a decent amount and then also the good vibes collection which are all really really awesome filters so if you guys want to know what my secret sauce is my absolute favorite secret filter it is the pop filter as you can see, it is crazy how much it brightens up your photos. I mean, that's already a pretty bright photo, but that just takes it to a whole new level. So I typically will turn the um, like the intensity down. I usually don't leave it all the way up because it can just tend to be a little too intense, a little overwhelming, and a lot of times it just like kind of blows out the photo. So I will usually put it down, depending on the photo, could be like halfway, but this one is definitely gonna be more like three fourths of the way. And that is pretty much all I do in this app. I will just um, throw the filter on it and then I will review it, save it, and then it'll be in my camera roll. So there is a lot of stuff that you can do in this app. They've got like so much um, as far as editing that you can do, but honestly, like I just use the Instagram app for all that stuff because I like to keep it simple. So once I have my photo with the filter on it, I will go to my Instagram and I will open up the picture. So then I will just kind of adjust it to, you know, wherever I want it. Um, and then once it's ready to go, I will just click next. So I don't do any of the filters in Instagram. I already use the pop filter from Color Story, but so there are definitely some things that I do in um, this section. So first things first, I always use the structure tool. I mean, you can see if you go like <laughs> way too harsh, it's um, really hideous, but it can really add that like crisp crispness to photos, especially if you aren't using like a really nice camera that's good at getting crisp images, this will be your best friend, this structure. So I usually just do like a little bit, depending on the photo, um, you know, I'll do more or less, but I'll just do a little bit of that to sharpen it or like crisp it up. And I also like to use the sharpen tool as well, just a little bit, again, just to make the photo really sharp. And uh, you know, all the details will pop, it's really crisp. So those are two things that I always do. Um, I usually don't mess around with the brightness just because that pop filter just does such a good job of doing that. But there are a couple things that I typically like to do. Um, a lot of times I like to up the warmth just a little bit, like not a whole lot, just a little bit. Um, and just kind of play around with that. Um, and then also sometimes depending on the photo, I might do saturation too, just depending. But one, um, so those are the main things that I do. Every once in a while, I might do a little bit of highlights, but like I said, the pop filter really does a good job of that. So I don't really mess around with that too much, but sometimes I will. So I always go in, I use the structure, I use the sharpen, and then I might, you know, bump up the warmth and saturation just a little bit and then maybe highlights. But one thing I do want to point out that I always use, I don't really need it in this picture, but it is the adjust tool. So a lot of times when you're taking pictures, you don't even realize it, but the background could be like slightly skewed, which isn't that big of a deal, but it drives me absolutely crazy. I always have to have it like perfect 90 degree angle. It just look, makes the picture look so much better. Whenever I see people's photos who have like this in the background, I'm just like, uh, like it just, it, it is not very aesthetically pleasing to the eye. So 
This photo didn't really need it, but a lot of times my background is crooked, so I will just use this straighten tool just to make sure that it is like perfectly, all of the lines in the background are perfectly straight. And then that is it. I will just go ahead and my add my caption and upload. So that is it for today's video. Now you guys know all of my secrets. You have my secret sauce. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and hopefully you were able to pick up a couple tips from it. But if you did enjoy this video, I would absolutely love for you to subscribe to my channel and join my little community here on YouTube. And of course, would love for you to follow me on Instagram so we can hang out on there as well. But that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.